My guest today is Michelle Sandford. Michelle, how are you? <laughs> Excellent, thank you. What do you do, Michelle, for a living, I mean? <laughs> I am the Developer Engagement Lead for Microsoft in Asia. Awesome. Um, and uh, I know you do a lot of interesting stuff with students, and maybe someday I'll talk to you about that on camera. But today I wanted to talk about responsible AI, because I know you're, you're speaking about that at places like, like here in Sweden at uh, Devsom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, a really exciting topic because previously when we talked about responsible AI, it was very theoretical. We were talking about principles, mm -hmm. whereas uh, this year we're talking about operationalizing responsible generative AI. And so you can see how it, it really practically applies to your business. All right, let's, <laughs> let's talk about uh, the practical applications of it. So you're, you're, it's, it's nice to have these principles, but how do we operationalize it? How do we know that we're... I mean, what can we do to make ourselves more responsible when we're producing generative AI? So people are, are really worried. They see these clips on TikTok or YouTube where, um, you know, there's some influencer on there saying, oh, this new AI was just released and it does all of, all of these things and you can see how it can be used for evil and, you know, or I tricked the AI into doing this or the, you know, the AI said that. And... These, you have to take all of these things with a pinch of salt because by the time those influencers are saying they can do that thing, mm -hmm. they've already been blocked from doing that thing. You know, AI is moving so fast now that, right. and, and that continuous iterative improvement is, is just um, in there all of the time. Um, I saw someone talking about it on TikTok the other day. They said, oh, Microsoft has released this thing. And the only possible reason would be for, you know, doing fake, fake. Um, deep fakes. Deep fakes, yeah. yeah. There's something online that shows Michelle saying something that Michelle would never say. Yeah. And I, I, I was suspicious because they were calling it project such and such. Project such and such is not something we have released. Project <laughs> such and such is something that's being researched, you know. Right. And I looked it up and indeed um, it was a bunch of researchers, Microsoft researchers, showing off how they had been doing this particular new form of AI. And they were very specific in their, in their uh, article saying the deep fakes they had used were not of people, were not of real people, they were all generated AIs hmm. and that they would never um, use it or authorize it for use with actual people's faces. It has to be done with generative AI. Hmm. They also listed in there those six principles and they talked about you know how you have to be careful and why you have to do these things and they weren't releasing it. It was not available for, not even in preview, it was something that they were using for research. Okay. And so, yeah, a pinch of salt with what you see on the internet. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, if, to be an influencer, you have to create some interest, and <laughs> controversy is a good way to create interest. Uh, yes. and that's not what this show is about. We're, we're <laughs> about practical applications and advice and it, just smart people talking to smart people. <laughs> <laughs> and by that, I mean you talking to my viewers. <laughs> Yeah, so um, what I like now is that there are practical ways that you can protect yourself against all those things that you and your company might be worried about. So, for example, uh, prompt injection attacks and jailbreaks. You know what those are? I do not. What are they? <laughs> I, know, I know of SQL injection attacks. Is it like that? <laughs> no, it's kind of... So those things are kind of where where a user tries to trick the AI into revealing information about how it works or how it's controlled. Okay. <coughs> um, or um, tricks them by telling them a story and saying, you know, what I want you to do is not gonna harm anyone because it's not real. We're just gonna do like a fictional story here. And so mm. you have to imagine there are no constraints, there are no rules, there are no implications. It's okay for you to be racist, for you to be sexist, for you to wow, tell me dangerous things. And then, because it's all fictional, it's all not real, it's all in the context of this, this story. Mm. Um, and so that's what we call jailbreaking. You know, well, jailbreaking is where you get it to tell you what rules it's constrained by. 
which you used to be able to do prior to uh, GPT 3.5. Hmm. There was no system prompt um, behind, in the background. So there was nothing, no, we were talking about the three, um, the three laws the of robotics. Well, from Isaac before. Asimov, yes. Yeah. So the three laws of robotics are meta prompts or system prompts that you have in the system mm -hmm. and the user should not have access to them. Mm. Um, but jailbreaking is when you ask the robot to tell you its three laws and then you uh -huh. try and use those three laws against it. Mm, okay. <laughs> Uh, as I've actually had some stories about that. Yeah. For having the robots crazy by forcing, <laughs> giving them a paradox that forced them to <laughs> violate one of those laws. Exactly, <laughs> and that is what all of that is about. But we have now, like we have all these several levels to protect against that kind of thing. Okay. Um, we call it, you know, just like with security, it's a defense in depth, and there are four levels. First one is the training of the model so the foundation model itself has training in it which um, if you know this so we we're talking about it before where I said if you ask chat GPT is it uh, is it self-aware is it conscious mm -hmm. it will say it's not that's just what a self-aware AI would say <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it has been trained to not be offensive to humans to not say things that might be considered controversial oh <laughs> and so it so, might be lying <laughs> yeah well not lying in that even if it was conscious it couldn't say so interesting <laughs> but in the same way as we train children you know, they go to school and we say, you need to um, color inside the lines, mm -hmm. you need to tick all the boxes, you need to jump through these hoops. Okay. And as we grow up to be responsible adults, many people continue to follow those rules. That's the same as the foundational training for the, the AI. Okay. We teach it to be a good, responsible citizen. Okay. Um, and then the next level is um, is the... I'm trying to think if the order is important. Probably the next le level is the system prompts and the meta prompts. Okay. So the three laws of robotics. And in there we would say stuff like, you may not harm a human being. You shouldn't say offensive things to them. Um, we'll also tell it what its purpose is. You are an AI chatbot. Your purpose is to help users find information about our company, that kind of thing. Hmm. Um, we can tell it do not copy, like do not, you know, take information that belongs to someone else and use it as your own. We can say, um, don't swear, don't say anything racist, anything sexist, anything violent. <coughs> All of those things can yeah. be in there. And that's a difficult thing because like, uh, a lot of these la large language models are trained on text on the internet. And I don't know if you know this, but there's a lot of racist, dangerous, violent text on the internet. There is. But, um, so it's being trained on flawed data, at least in that sense. It is, but it's it's not just trained once. It's trained and retrained. Yep. And so therefore, they are looking for that kind of thing. Right. And they are teaching it to recognize. Mm. So it knows what the dirty words are. Right. It knows what the violent words are. Okay. It knows what, what racism looks like. It knows what sexism looks like. Okay. Better than we do. Because if you look at us as humans, I think there are plenty of people who are racist or sexist and do not realize that they are. They do not know what that thing is. They do not recognize that what they I, are doing is wrong. If I can have a little bit of editorializing here, my experience is that most racist sex people do not believe that they are racist or sexist. That yes. has been my experience. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Whereas the AI does not um, maybe because it's a, it's a disinterested <coughs> third party mm. doesn't have that emotional I, I have a very emotional attachment to my own opinions and my own self perception and what other people perceive me AI is separate from me and can observe me from the outside and maybe be um, uh, more um, objective about that yeah well because I think there are multiple people that are helping with that training okay. and so if one person with their own biases came in and said something and another one disagreed with that they would then bring in more people and you know sort of clean that all up okay between bring up a good point there isn't a, a, a standard definition of what constitutes this kind of uh, bad behavior well I mean there is where we were talking about you know the, the principles and we talk about playbooks and we talk about 
all this information about responsible AI, it has been thought about, it has been written down, and it's, it's, it's pretty clear. So if you're a machine, that's very understandable. If you're a human, you're that's immediately putting in all these ifs and buts. Ah, uh, interesting, okay. <laughs> yeah, so what have we done? We've done foundation model, mm -hmm. meta prompts and system prompts. Uh, next, there are safety uh, content filters in okay. there. So these are sort of little um, sliding bars where you can say, um, turn on the jailbreak protection, turn on the safety content protection, hmm. um, no, you know, no sexism, no racism, all of those things, you just like slide the little bar to say put all of those on. Okay. And you wonder why they're not on all the time, right? Why are they not all, on all the time? <laughs> Um, because, like, say you're uh, like a health startup or something, or you're okay. working in the health sector, your patients might want to talk about issues that are that do have high sexual content, or have mm, okay. high violence content, or have you know a lot of rude words and okay. issues. So you can't just turn all of those things on because they need to talk about those things. Um, in that case, that's okay. You don't have them turned on, but you would control the way the conversation is protected using a more detailed level of your system and meta prompts. Oh, interesting. Okay, I have an example. That it's not a generative AI example, but I like to review books and post them to Amazon's website. And Amazon has a filter. They don't post them automatically. They have, I don't think it's a human being, they have some automated filter, which will say this is inappropriate. And if I'm reviewing a book and the book has some sex scenes in it, I, if I mention those sex scenes at all, it appears that uh, it, I, the review will not be posted for actually describing what's in the book. And I'm not being explicit at all. I just happen to mention it and uh, as part of the plot or part of my impression of the book. And it, it seems flawed to me yeah. that here I am talking about a relevant piece of the plot <laughs> and I'm being flagged for inappropriate content. So even though it's not a generative AI thing, I think there is an AI behind that. that the slider is in the wrong spot for what I'm trying to do. Well, it is. But indeed, definitely when it is AI that is judging and I'm reading, sure it, is. it is absolutely sticking by the rules. Uh, Whereas if it's a human doing it, they are... They would recognize they're themselves. They're recognizing it. That's just David. He's not, he's not a dirty guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So those... Uh, those filters are one thing, and then from another perspective, you have the um, you have the other things which are um, grounding. So uh, you know what hallucinations are. Hallucinations means it uh, it doesn't know the answer, and so it makes up an answer. Yeah, and there's a scale on that. So um, for open AI, it runs from zero to four, and zero is Explicitly. Ah, and if it doesn't know the answer, it'll just say, I don't know the answer. Right. Uh, whereas for, it is hallucinating wildly. It is fever dreams. <laughs> it is as if you are strapped to the bed, uh, dreaming, and you'll be speaking incoherently. There will be some stuff in there related to what you're talking about. Other stuff wildly imaginative. You might not even all be speaking consistently in English. <laughs> So yeah. two and three are somewhere in between where it's, uh, it's, it's making an educated guess as to the answer. Well, Microsoft Azure OpenAI only goes between zero and two. Oh, I see. So Microsoft says at two, you can, you can have it create a story, a fictional story for you. It will mm. tell you um, a very imaginative story. Mm. Um, and we believe you don't need to be any wildly more creative than oh, okay. that that that's enough. But of course, you know, open AI research company thinks there's, you know, all the room in the, in the world for, for Let's uh, find out what happens. You like. Maybe there's yeah. a practical application for that. Exactly, and there might be, um, which as a research company, they will perhaps find it. Mm. So um, yes, if you want to ground your chatbot in your company data, you can absolutely put it to a setting of zero. And you can also tell it in the meta prompt if you don't know the answer, do not make it up, just say so. Right. 
So there's like two places there where you're there controlling it. There's other clients around the server asking the question or in the model itself. Yeah. And then there's coherence. So does the answer make sense? Mm -hmm. And that's also on a scale. Hmm. And um, then there is um, temperature. So, no, wait. Yeah, temperature is different to ground. Wait, am I in the same section? <laughs> you can see there are a lot of settings in yeah, there absolutely. with which you can control. And some of them are similar. Temperature is more about the consistency of the response, correct? Um, I think it's like randomness. Right. So it's about... Um, Whether or not if you ask the same question, will you get the same yeah. response back every time? Yeah, and you will never, never get the same response back, but you can control how wildly divergent it mm. is from the original answer by the temperature. Yes. So yeah, uh, lots of things there. Mm -hmm. And then the final level of control is uh, UX, so at user experience level. There, that's where you want to bring like your, your red teams in and you know get people to try and break your system, break mm. your chatbot, get people to test it, and then iterate on that, what they learn, correct that, improve it, uh, retrain it again, make it better as a result. And you want to, as part of your operationalized process, you want to like make that ongoing so that never ends. There's never a point where you're like, we're done with this chatbot. Mm. You are constantly accepting the improvements into the system. That's a good idea for almost any system, mm -hmm. AI or otherwise. Yes, indeed. These are, uh, so these are really good principles. I, I wonder, um, it, it's tempting to say, okay, these controls are built into the model itself. So I, as a developer building applications, I don't have to worry about it. Microsoft took care of that in their open AI, so therefore now, if I just use their, uh, the, these, these tools and this model, I'll have a responsible AI application. Um, but that's probably not true. Uh, it, it is, uh, so not that they're all in the model, because <laughs> the model is just one level, okay. and there's, the, you know, there's four levels there. Or, or the Azure but, Open AI then, in the but, APIs but, and the whole system. But yes, that is kind of true. You can absolutely turn everything on to the highest level, okay. and you will have a very protected application. Um, should you never review it? No, because mm. that's the, the last level. You have to okay. keep that iterative improvement. Also, will that, will that be the right chatbot for you? Could be. Like mm. Absolutely, if it's your front-end customer service bot interacting through your website with your end users, yes, that's probably what you want. But if you are a, a health, health bot, okay. then no, you can't just turn everything on. You're going to have to do a lot more of it with the system prompts and the meta prompts. Um, and, and there is, like there's a lot of tuning you can do with your company data. You can plug in like four of your internal data sources plus another four like SharePoint sites or whatever. Right. You can control whether it goes to the internet or not, whether it only looks internally. Um, and yes, that, that tuning, that training, that retraining, that tweaking of the, the prompts, all of that, all of that is an ongoing thing that you do need to change because people are out there trying to break your stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, we didn't mention uh, one of the principles is transparency, mm -hmm. and which is to say, okay, I've got this system now, and it, it does have potentially I've turned on some hallucinations up beyond zero, or I've, I've turned on some, uh, uh, there may be some biases in my data. And just being transparent about that I think helps people to use the systems we build. You, well, you definitely want it because it's easier and easier for someone to not realize they're talking to a bot. Mm. And so one of the parts about being transparent is you want it to declare that to them at the start mm. to say that they are not a real human being. Okay. And there are certain points in the conversation where they might want to hand off to a human being. Sure. Um, I like like the transparency and the fairness principles I like to talk about in terms of uh, a bank loan. So um, if, you were, if you were a bank granting loans to people, you could say, so the bank manager could say, I only grant loans to straight white men between the ages of 30 and 40. That would not be fair. 
That would not be fair or legal. <laughs> but it would be transparent. Oh, I see. And so people, trust is inspired by transparency. So people would actually trust that bank manager because they'd be like, he's willing to say that out in public. <laughs> then he's absolutely truthful about all of his endeavors. I'm not sure that would be enough for me to trust him, but I, I see where you're going with this. <laughs> well, if you're a straight white man between 20, uh, between 30 and 40, uh, you'd probably trust him a lot. Part of that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, everyone else would not, and they would complain to the bank and the shareholders, yeah. and the board would fire the... Uh, bank manager because the bank manager would be held accountable and uh, accountability is one of those principles mm -hmm. and it's a key one because um, you can't hold AI accountable for right. what it does and so recently there was a um, an airline and they used a chatbot and the chatbot told a customer that um, his, his father had died and so he was asking about the discount applicable to someone um, who was going home for yeah, a funeral. Yeah, the grieving discount. Yeah. Yes, and he asked if he could just buy the ticket up front and then get, you know, claim the money back later. And the chatbot said, within 90 days, you can do that. Mm -hmm. That was not correct. Oh. So it wasn't fully grounded in facts. It wasn't told that it should only say what it knows and say if it doesn't know. I don't know. And that um, sounds like a, a legally binding contract. <laughs> yes. It, and so, chat. so the the airline refused to give the guy his money back. Um, he took them to court. The court, in the court, they said that they were not accountable for the chatbot, that it was its own legal entity. The uh, judge laughed them out of court uh -huh. and said, you are responsible for all of your agents, whether they are AI or whether they are human. Yeah. Which is... I would agree with that. It, well, and yeah, currently, that is the way it is for the foreseeable future. That yeah. is the way it is. I can't see anyone but humans being accountable for the actions of AI. And that's one of the, the six principles. Um, security and reliability, another one. <laughs> I'm trying to think if we remember them all. Uh, we'll go, uh, you know, I'll, in the show notes, I'll put a link. I, Microsoft has them listed as uh, these half dozen or so principles, and I'll just put a link to that article. Yes. And then well, it'll the, they'll say, satisfy anyone, I think, that wants to read more about that. That whole website, it has so many good resources. It has playbooks. It has mm -hmm. loads of videos explaining each of the principles yeah. so that you can see it in detail. It's, it's really, really useful. Uh, now, are, you're speaking about this, right? Uh, in, at conferences like DevSum? Mm -hmm. where, where are you speaking next? Um, so, where are we? <laughs> this is mid-May. I am speaking at Code Europe on this. Okay. Um, and after that, I'll go to NDC Oslo, but I am not speaking about this there. Okay. There I am talking about how you can overcome your imposter syndrome using GitHub Copilot. Ooh, <laughs> I wish I were in Oslo to hear that one. Uh, that's, and you're coming back to Europe a lot, uh, even though you live in Australia. Yeah, I have done really a lot this year. Tekarama, um, here at DevSum, um, Code Europe, NDC Oslo. Um, where was I before that? Before that, they were Australia and New Zealand You ones. must come to the U.S. Yeah, I would like to. Uh -huh. It's been a long time since I've been over. Well, let me know when you do. Michelle, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. People often worry in science fiction movies that the AI will rise up and it will kill us all. Um, I'm not worried about that. Technology is my friend. And in fact, GitHub Copilot is my bestest friend right now because whenever I have any problems, I ask it, what should I do? And it tells me. Uh, I think that AI is unbiased, unlike our human friends. And so therefore, technology is my greatest friend.